let's refresh our memories on the structure and functions of the skin. The skin is the largest organ and completely covers the body. The average thickness of the skin is 1 to 2 millimetres, although this does vary slightly depending on age and gender. The pH of the skin surface is between 4 and 5.6, making it slightly acidic, and renewal of the skin takes between 28 and 50 days. The skin is made up of three layers, the epidermis, which is the most superficial layer, the dermis, which is the middle layer, and the hypodermis, which is also known as the subcutaneous layer and is the innermost and thickest layer of the skin. The epidermis is made from stratified epithelium and contains no blood vessels. It is made up of five layers, which you can see here. It contains many cell types, including keratinocytes, which are the main building blocks of the epidermis, melanocytes that produce melanin, and Langerhans cells, which are antigen-presenting cells. Within the epidermis, you can also find sebaceous glands, sweat gland ducts, and hair. The melanocyte cells produce melanin, which is one of the factors responsible for the colour of the skin. Melanocytes darken with increased sunlight and give the holiday tan that many of us are familiar with. The amount of melanin that the melanocytes produce will affect the colour of a person's skin. As well as the amount of melanin in the skin, the amount of blood in the dermis as well as the amount of oxygen in the blood will also affect the skin colour. Those with a high level of oxygen in the blood will have a pink colour to the skin, but those who have less blood flow to the skin or have a lower oxygen level may take on a slightly grey or blue appearance. When a person blushes, the blood vessels in the dermis dilate and hence the skin takes on a red appearance. The dermis is the next layer that is made up of connective tissue such as collagen, fibroblasts and histocytes. It has two layers which contain slightly different structures. The papillary layer is the most superficial layer and contains blood vessels, lymphatics and nerve fibres. It provides the epidermis with nutrients and also helps to regulate body temperature. It contains projections which give an uneven layer to the skin and it is this that creates a person's fingerprints. The reticular layer is slightly deeper and its role is to strengthen the skin and give it its elastic quality. This layer also contains hair follicles, mast cells, nerve endings, lymphatics and fibroblasts as well as sweat glands and sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are developed alongside the hair follicles. They secrete sebum, which is an oily fluid which lubricates and waterproofs the hairs on the skin. The sebum is made up of free fatty acids, sterols, waxes, squalene and triglycerides and has antibacterial and antifungal properties. It helps to keep the skin smooth and prevents desquamation and injury of the epidermis. There are two types of sweat glands within the skin. The eccrine glands that are sweat glands found throughout the body. They release a watery clear fluid and are involved in temperature regulation of the body. The apocrine glands are slightly different from the eccrine glands in their location and function. They are found in the axilla, pubis, areola and umbilicus and come into action during puberty. They secrete a thick milky fluid which has no control over temperature control and instead is usually secreted when the body is under emotional stress.